Frank, three bags full. Hello, and you're listening to Let's Drone Out. Tonight we are joined by everyone's favourite, Curry Kitchen. Hello. The lovely moustache, Stephen. Hello. The f- loveliest, luscious beard, Frankel Frankel. Good evening. Our guest for tonight, Mr. Goat, he himself, Cerebrus Velvet. <laughs> 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 the velvet tash <laughs> and i'm brighton to life lie hello and stephen has some news for us yeah quick quick update to winter blue actually uh we were laughing at you and sipping mead tonight uh just for change just to correct you there um so yeah a couple of news items i was going to run through one i mentioned some dude who had done this wonderful fix for DJI FPV and it worked in with the MSP OSD and it, it added proper modern fonts. It wasn't in fact some dude and he called me out. So apologies. I, I, I didn't want to call him Nifer, but apparently it is pronounced Nifer as, as in with a knife. Um, if that is your real name, <laughs> it must be difficult for you, but I'm guessing it's not anyway. Nifer, it's, it's absolutely amazing and I'd like to quickly uh, show a little bit of the work here so I'll just share the video and what you're going to be seeing is what happens now if you run your DJI FPV goggles instead of a janky beta flight font you get a nice slightly transparent font that looks like it's from this decade which is pretty amazing holy crap that's amazing that's like someone's using a free sky radio that's weird yeah for the next light yeah (laughs) it's an next light don't tell winter blue so yeah that's what he got up to and uh i thought that's rather nice so i just wanted to share that and that's uh mr nifer uh his font is now linked off of the uh, msp osd page i believe if you look at their readme as one of the uh the two kind of semi-official fonts to supplement that there's that and uh, also an inav font which has a whole load of custom uh symbols and colors oh there we are nifa is daniel cullender 2019 scottish fpv racing champion well thank you very much for the information uh, and apologies uh, if we've accidentally docked you oh well mm. wasn't us <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's Blame haggis <laughs> it's excellent work anyway it really is bloody amazing a um, couple of other news items while we were um, off generally ranting about FR Sky there was an update on OpenHD talking about the project status making note of the real complex situation they've been through where someone promised a whole load of features and then abruptly left the project and they rather didn't so much as overpromise and under deliver as overpromise and then f off and leave everyone so the project's been kind and, of and delete the everything. binaries accidentally yeah pulling everything together over the last year and it looks like they're they're at the point now where they're going to actually get into their stride and start making releases and there's kind of this apologetic post about all of that so really hope that they they get everything sorted out and and can pull it together uh, it looks very promising but logistically they've had a heck of a time so fingers crossed on that one another bunch that um, has also been doing great in the last year um edge tx are finally doing their flying dutchman 2.8 release it was a couple of days late for the rc and this is the one that overhauls all the graphical side if you've got a color radio so instead of it looking like a bunch of kind of grid boxes it looks more like a modern smartphone with nice rounded boxes and better use of color and the ui reorganized for touch it's not great if you don't have a color radio but there are some bug fixes and minor improvements going in there as well Um, they're up to rc2 on htx 2.8 and with this release you get a full online updater so there's a buddy website you can go to in chrome which functions much like all the other chrome usb doodads like esc configurator and uh, it allows you to upgrade your radio using a browser. So you don't have to install Companion. You can just plug it into a browser and off you go. Uh, it also supports a number of 
uh, audio packs and I'm pleased to say that they've, they've also got the UK audio packs that yours truly put in a while ago. Um, they need to sort out some of the labeling on those. You need to basically rename them from ENGB Ryan and the ENGB Libby just to EN because the radio only rep, uh, recognizes EN language. It doesn't recognize ENGB and things like that. But that's pretty good. And I will try and rectify that in future. Um, and there's also an item I dropped in here that Jack really liked uh, the Doomba. Um, Jack. <laughs> Jack's imagination and perhaps trousers were captured by this. Um, mm -hmm. I'll say a word about that. Uh, it arouses me <laughs> deeply. This is a Roomba that could be anything. packed with RC motors <laughs> and uh, what appears to be a tank of propane in the center of the construction. It's very fast and it's very probably on fire uh, by now, I would guess. So um, that's news, uh, such as it is, out of the way um, to the main body of the show. Yeah, because I booked Cerberus onto the show. I, 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 I think first contacted you like a month or two ago because I basically saw <clears throat> in the BDRA calendar there was the championships. I was like, well, we've got to have someone on to talk about the end of the 2022 season and what how things are going to play out for 2023 and you know we have to have serbon because i think you must have organized like the the majority of the 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 events that actually went on this year it seems like that There's so <laughs> many that you've done this year it slightly um, felt like it but i didn't do them all <laughs> um and then as well as that, you've also been doing all the, the wing racing events, I think, or at least the vast majority of the X-Class events you've been doing the uh, race control for. And you've got this fancy new uh, project race trailer on the go. So you've got a lot of stuff to talk about. So I really want to have you on and talk about everything. Thank you. Very kind. Yeah, I've got, I've got more projects than I need, as always. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's always the case with me. There are way more projects than I have time for, and I spread myself too thinly. But it's all good fun. It stops me getting bored. Uh, I, my brain just goes too quickly for me to sit around too much. So yeah, it's been um, it's been a hell of a year. It has to has to be said. So I've spent. Um, I'm actually now no longer a committee member of the British Drone Racing Association. My tenure uh, came to an end on Saturday at the AGM. Uh, I did my, my 12 months as technical and safety director of the BDRA, which was fantastic fun. Uh, got to see a lot of stuff from the inside, you know, and how hard the committee works and, and all the challenges to nailing jelly to the ceiling, which is, um, you know, trying to organize drone races. And it doesn't matter what you do, someone's going to be upset with you. So it's a lot of difficult decisions. Hell of a year. Um, I've raced a lot more this year as well. Um, so... Which way you, you placed so, in the championships, right? Three there, yeah. So I, I had a terrible weekend. <laughs> oh. um, so the, the championships, uh, yeah, it was last weekend. Um, so all of these reprobates uh, together um, at Buckminster, uh, home of the BMFA. Uh, I'm hiding on the left there somewhere. Um, yeah, really good weekend uh, for everybody um, and really good fun. Ah, it's me full screen. Don't do that. Um, <laughs> but I had a I had a nightmare of a time. Um, I had a load of equipment failures. I had uh, quads that just didn't want to play. Uh, I struggled with the wind. It was quite windy on Saturday, um, which I find quite difficult for some reason. Uh, I managed to qualify into the final that I should have probably been in, but I by the skin of my teeth I was in that six. Um, and then having gotten myself into there, I was in a good position because I was pretty well matched with those guys in my final and I, I stood a chance of taking the final and you get three runs in the final and two of the runs, my, my VTX expired. Um, so I finished last in my final, but I'm still 54th in the UK. So there you go. That's, that's yeah. a good claim to fame. Yeah, you can claim that one. Right. And I think I'm, yeah. uh, I'm in the veterans league because I'm old and I have gray hair. I think I'm like. 12th 
veteran or something in the UK. What's so, the cutoff for veterans at the moment? 45 years of age. There we you're go. Now, I mean, I think in the BMFA generally, that's like juniors, right? <laughs> in the BMFA, uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. There, yeah. there is a, They probably there is wouldn't a little, let you in the club. There's a little seam of youngsters there. Um, and also, they are the BMFA are really open at the moment to this drone thing. With you know, they've set up this separate sort of not separate but a categorised drone membership, um, and, and they want to encourage doing it properly because I think those that run the BMFA realise that actually they do need to appeal to the younger flyer. Um, how you do that and and excite the the balsa wood boys, I'm not sure. Mm. But let's. <laughs> I, I did let's get some feedback. There from some, uh, I know someone who was there at Buckminster at the weekend, not for the drone racing, but for the uh, model builders event yep. that was going on in the hangar. And uh, I, I do hear that, that there wasn't enough uh, cross pollination between the two groups. Apparently there's not a lot of uh, drone racers going and buying enough balsa. I heard that <laughs> as some feedback. So you know, we, we have to come up with something, some kind of Balsa and tissue paper, like drone. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, for a us, wing made out of carbon fiber. Yeah, yep. we we don't really leave the, the <laughs> racetrack because we we kind of arrive, we set up, and then we're bang, 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 qualifying heats all day, and then finals, and then pack up and go. So we're busy every hour of, of both days. But I can say that we did have quite a lot of the. So there was a lot going on at Buckminster this weekend. There was us and two other big events. Uh, and people were coming over and, um, you know, asking us about the quads and we were giving a you know, spare pair of goggles to people. And uh, we had a screen set up in the, the Killer Quads mini marquee. Um, mm -hmm. So all the Killer Quads team guys there. So people were coming in and watching the racing and, and everybody that actually made the effort to come over and watch it was like, oh, wow. Didn't realize this was what it was like. This is amazing. Yeah. Right? You know? <laughs> Especially when you've got the like the really quick boys going. So, um, so the the winners. Uh, so our UK champion uh, is Sol Sol FPV uh, took the win at the weekend. Second place Nighthawk. Third place was AK, uh, and the highest placed veteran was KPV. Mm. Uh, so they're they're all your winners uh, for this year for twenty two. Um, Hopefully we'll see them what, all back for 23. What was the time split between the winners and the kind of median people, middle of the pack? Huge. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, Soul is just a machine. He is an absolute machine. He's a, an amazing talent. Um, and the gap between him and second place, I think, was seven minutes or something at one point. Um, so he, Pardon? Well, it spread over the, the 10 qualifying rounds. Oh, right, okay. So um, how, how do the rounds work then? Because the, the the format always seems fairly nebulous. So what's how does it work at the moment? Okay, so uh, you go out in your qualifying rounds. You have two minutes uh, to get as many laps as you can within the lap cap. Once that two minutes expires, you've got 30 seconds to finish the lap that you're on. So the lap cap was four laps. So okay. Seoul was knocking in four laps in, I think his quickest was 1.15. I think, don't quote me on that. I haven't got all the numbers in front of me. Uh, he was trying, he was threatening to do a 1.10. He kept saying he was going to do four in 1.10. I, I, my quickest was three in 1.58, which meant wow. that I then okay. had 30 seconds to finish it, but I actually did the four in two minutes 32. So it's two seconds away from doing four laps. That's because I'm I'm old and I'm slow. So so the guys down in uh, the 10th final, because there's 60 pilots at the championships, we break them into groups of six pilots. So you've got A final all the way down to J final, I think. Um, so the guys down in the bottom, uh, we weren't really managing four laps. But there are no... Two years ago, you would go to the championships and then the bottom final, you'd have guys that couldn't do a lap. Uh, the quality now is so much higher. There are no slow pilots anymore. You know, er everybody can bang laps in. We can't catch Seoul, but we can bang laps in. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, uh, uh, we'll, we'll have to find out about Seoul and see if we can get him on at some point. And yeah, you definitely find should. Him out. 
out about him. But um, there was there was also talk of some inter club rivalry being sort of fanned at the uh, at the event. How was yeah. that? How was that working? So I, I thought this was really good. So this wasn't um, it wasn't really kicked off by the BDRA. It was kicked off by the local groups, which is that's really good to see that that kind of enthusiasm is there. So the the guys from Hull. Uh, were trash talking the guys from Wales who were trash talking the guys from <laughs> Bristol. Um, so I think it was the guys from Hull that put, that put together this idea that we would have, uh, or they would have like a little rivalry between the separate groups. Um, so nominate, you know, these are the Hull pilots, these are the uh, um, SGDC pilots, these are the, the Team Woolly Shoot pilots. Uh, and then they, they figured out who finished where and they, they put it themselves head to head you know sorted it all out on social media and and had this whole thing going on for weeks before the championships which it was really excellent it was great to see um and you never know that might be something that the uh, the bdra take up and and do a bit more of uh, mm. but definitely shows that you know the spirit is there the racing spirit the camaraderie and the trash talking is it's all going on <laughs> It's all, it's all survived the sort of a few tough years of yeah. making it, you know, difficult uh, has, to has run been, events. Yeah, has been really hard. Yeah, events um, in the second half of the season struggled to fill up, uh, whereas pre-COVID, you would fill an event up in the first five minutes of, of it going live. Um, there were a couple of events this year that, that didn't take place because they didn't meet their quotas. Uh, so it has been really hard, and the, the cost of living crisis is is really hurting us all, right? You know, that from from racers to freestylers to to wing pilots, you know, flight controllers are twice the price they used to be. Um, so it's difficult to justify the, you know, the the weekend away, the petrol to get there, the the amount of stuff you're going to break while you're there. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Yeah, FPV. still still a fact of, of flying is that you're going to crash yeah. something, right? Yeah, but it's still a healthy sport, you know. Even with all those challenges, um, there's still you know there were 60 pilots there all competing uh, mm -hmm. for for a whole weekend, and it, I, I'm confident next year will be even busier. Well, I know I'm going to be busier because I'm going to be doing <laughs> loads of stuff. So, um, and for uh, anyone who doesn't know, how do you get into the BDRA Championship event? Like, how do you get the invitation yeah so you have to be a member of the bdra for starters so you you can find the bdra at bdra.uk that's the website uh then you can sign up it's 10 pounds for a year i mean that's dirt cheap before you even start 10 pounds over 12 months is really really cheap it will ping you off to ifpv uh, which is a website operated by druid uh and ifpv is kind of like Ticketmaster for the fpv community uh, it's not operated and run by the BDRA. It's held separately. So that means that you you know that um, there's no controlling interest from the BDRA. Let's put it that way. Uh, and once you've signed up, you start going to British qualifiers. So they'll be advertised on IFPV. You sign up to them, you go along. Uh, last year, you only needed to go to one event uh, to qualify, but you would have had to score very highly at that one event to then get enough points to be in the top 60 in the UK. Uh, we then invite the top 60 to the championship event uh, with the caveat that uh, anyone that can't make it, their space will be offered to the next 10 pilots. So if you qualify 61 to 70, you're in with a chance, but only if someone from the top 60 drops out. So you have to be a member to qualify and that's 10 pounds a year. If you're going to a BQE, you will get a couple of quid off your entrance fee when you sign up. So by the time you've been to three or four events, you've had your 10 quid back in discounts. Um, so, yeah, it's not expensive from that aspect. It's only expensive when you crash into things and stuff catches fire. Mm. <laughs> and uh, Well, some of the events that you've done uh, this year have obviously had the X-Class ones. I feel like those are... The most expensive crashes at the moment right <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely so i i've been doing a lot of stuff with um stubsy and the wing boys uh and fossils stuff uh, and the x-class racers um so that's outside of the bdra they don't look after that that's a, a separate 
entity that's just starting up, that's just finding its feet um, and, and operates separately. And I, I've been really lucky. I got invited uh, to race direct the first uh, wing race, which was at Popham. Uh, we've done three now. Uh, so, yeah, I, that's been great fun. It, if you think trying to herd five inch racers on a, on a race day is difficult try it with the wing guys because they're brand new and they've got no idea what's going on it's brilliant but we're getting them up to speed we've done three races now we did uh wings and wheels this year uh which uh you uh, some of you guys were at uh and the, we ran the x-class races there and we've just done uh wings over the valley uh which was up uh, three guesses in wales uh, don't ask me to pronounce the name of the place that it was, <laughs> but it was the top of a mountain and there were sheep and a valley, so it must have been Wales, right? Uh, could have been anywhere in Wales, though, couldn't it, really? Could have been, yeah. And uh, it was great. It had a couple was, of L's in it. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was our first opportunity to do a, a wing track that spread over three fields. So, mm -hmm. so we really let the wings stretch their legs uh, and get them out uh, and doing really amazing laps. Uh, and I was there with um, my my whole crazy setup. So at, at Wings and Wheels, um, we we had this, um, which is the gazebos of doom. <laughs> and you can see there's a lot of wires and bits and bobs and stuff to deal with. Um, yeah, you've you... got you've got a couple of, yeah. of gazebos just absolutely netted with various bits of of wire trailing around to your what looks like some folding tables with a computer on it yeah so 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 that's what i've been i've been running as my rd setup my rest director setup this year um and you know lugging all that up the side of a welsh mountain uh, and getting that all set up was was great fun um but that's going to change for next year and we, we're going to do a lot more of the x-class racing uh, we're going to do a lot more wing racing, um, and I, I, what I've done is I, I've moved away from uh, being on the committee of the BDRA, which um, is great fun but uses up a lot of time. What I actually want to do is concentrate on uh, the stuff that I'm really enjoying, which is race directing and racing, right? So um, I've, uh, I've now created FPV Racing Solutions. Which is just a little name for me to operate under and and, and do my thing. Um, so next year I'll I'll be, yeah I'll be FPV Racing Solutions and I'll be running. I've got five races for the Killer Quads, which is my my little community that I set up, which um, is pretty self sufficient now. So we've got five five inch races there. There'll be a whole bunch of X class and wing races next year, uh, and we've got Wings Over Feckenham coming up. I don't know why, how I got roped into that one. We yeah, are 30th of October. We're going to be wing racing, so that should be interesting. That is that is going to be entertaining. Uh, I'm not sure whether to expect like a wing to just get blown away or <laughs> someone's fingers to freeze up first. And that's <laughs> doing, holding an event in the yeah. end of October. I think it could be challenging, but we'll give it a go. Because um, with with and with killer quads, I mean you've you've really built up quite a a, a big amount of experience, right? Because you hold is it weekly events with killer quads? I mean, not not like race yeah, events, so, right? They're so, just small race meets. Well, yeah, so right? we we have Friday practice. Um, so we we head over to uh, Bromsgrove Rugby Club every Friday after work. We head out there, and I I do take the lap timer with us. Uh, and the a, a part of the setup, so I actually have a flight case which has a laptop built into it um, with a screen and a lid. So you just open it up, and the, the Wi-Fi is built in, and the amplifier for the speakers. And it's all in one case. It's a race in a box, um, and we throw the the lap timer out. So we've we've run a little mini series over our practice sessions uh, every Friday. Um, when the clocks change, we'll have to stop because we'll run out of daylight too quickly. Um, <laughs> And, and, and then we'll crown a sort of uh, king of practice at the end of the season. Um, so, so next year we're going to do it as a proper local league um, with, the, with five full race events. Um, a couple of them might be British qualifying events. We're not sure how that will pan out yet, um, but we'll put the application in and, and see how we do. But yeah, we 
I, I've been um, yeah, trying to get it all set up so it runs smoothly and you can just chuck it out of the car and set it up. But the, the next step to that is the race trailer. Mm. <laughs> I've been following this very closely. It's a very <laughs> exciting thing. It's on the on the Killer Quads Discord. There is a Project Race Trailer channel, and that is one of the few Discord channels I do have set up to actually like notify me. Like <laughs> I want to know whenever anything happens on there because it's it's pretty good fun to follow that. Well, they're all all of the Killer Quads guys are, are now telling me that um, the the first few video so FPV Racing Solutions has its own YouTube channel. Um, but we haven't streamed any events from it yet. Uh, and the guys are all saying, right, okay, we want a YouTube mini series on the trailer build. It's like, okay. <laughs> I, I believe you have some pictures of that you could share, right, to uh, kind of walk us through what you've done. Indeed, yeah. So um, this is back in, uh, this was October 2019. Um, so okay. So pre the, pre the, uh, the COVID. The before times. This is in the before times, yeah, when um, when we could afford petrol. Um, uh, and uh, I, I brought this sort of quite cheaply as a fixer-upper back in 2019, and uh, that's at the workshop unit uh, that I Liquid rent. Liquid Art. Yes. This trailer has Liquid written art. on the side in vinyl. Uh, so it's a big box trailer. Um, a, uh, it's a, an indispension tower van. <laughs> Not that it matters. Uh, it's three meters by two and a half meters or something. Um, gigantic big thing. And I brought it fairly cheap because the brakes needed an overhaul. Mm. Uh, so I left it with the chap I brought it from um, for him to do the brakes. And he didn't get time to do them before uh, the, the pandemic hit us. Um, and then I couldn't get over there to work on it because I was... Um, uh, extremely vulnerable so i was isolated uh so that's me inside the trailer on, on the day that i agreed to buy it and i'm smiling at the wife because i know she's going to kill me <laughs> <laughs> um so it, it kind of sat there and languished all the way through the through the pandemic so i only actually finally got it here um two or three months ago uh, and the guy that was going to do the brakes couldn't do the brakes uh he just he was totally stuck with it so the the brakes look like that oh wow so yeah that that, that i mean i can see that there was me. there was some bearing there at some point but yeah. it doesn't look in great shape there yeah so I'm that, not sure that what brakes are supposed to look like but that does look a bit rusty and stuff yes, there's, there's, some there's goo. A, a lot of rust going on so what, what we need been... is jack to commentate because jack's a qualified mechanic. qualified mechanic go jack along with his bachelor's in fine art. So, come on, Jack. The aesthetics of this mechanical situation. Talk us through it. Uh, well, <laughs> it's very well lubricated. I can see that. <laughs> um, yeah, it looks like your wheel bearing has... Uh, remained on the axle and you've removed uh yeah you've totally removed all the brakes and yeah. they're left with the, just the back plate um usually you'd find grease on the bearing rather than in between <laughs> on the stub axle yeah. just so, on the the shaft and you know it's a miracle i i'm hope i'm hoping that the 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 hub bolt the hub nut had been pinched or did it just spin off and so that was when i str i stripped it all apart because it, it was just so rusty and everything was a nightmare to get undone um so that was me back to a to a level playing field uh, and after a, a lot of hard graft and a lot of so i i've restored cars like i, I was i've restored a triumph spitfire i've restored restored an mx5 I'm used to cars. I have no idea when it comes to trailers, none whatsoever. So trying to find the parts and figure stuff out was has been really hard work. And it should have been a quick, give it a zhuzh, get it on the road, you know, get it going. But it's going to be all this winter, I think, to fit it out. So I started with that, and I ended up with Ooh, uh, this substantially super, more shiny, this super Very blurry shiny. picture uh, of much more shininess. 
Uh, and and the eventual plan, um, because while, while we had, uh, while we were all stuck indoors, I had a lot of time to do SketchUp. The eventual plan is that it will be race control in a box on wheels. So yeah. you'll drag it into the event, open those front doors, um, nice. and and off you will go. Ooh, wow. This picture caught my imagination because for the audio listeners, you, you've got a, a roof that's coming out the front to shield people from the weather. Um, presumably Cerberus will be working the magic from inside the trailer, but the, the side of the trailer is fully split in half into two huge double doors going out each side in an arrangement that, to me at least, suggests the existence of large amount of uh, screen real estate on each door <laughs> so that passers-by would be able to see what the races are up to. And yeah. I think that's amazing. Yeah. So hopefully those doors will house some screens so you can come up and watch the racing uh, on one screen. On another screen, you have all your scores. So you'll be able to check your position and, and see what's going on. Um, and then hopefully we'll be sat in there doing the race directing part. Uh, and the, the pilots uh, will be, uh, unfortunately, it's not quite as plush for them. Uh, they're in the they're in the six by three gazebo. Where they belong, um, where they belong. the animal cage. I was I was absolutely let's get in the tent. <laughs> I was absolutely amazed when we did Wings Over the Valley that when I woke up on the Sunday morning, the gazebo was still there. Um, <laughs> yes, was, the weather was horrendous. Um, yeah, that's that's the plan. Mm. Um, there's a lot of spannering to do and a, a lot of woodwork to do and uh, a lot of figuring out to do. But uh, we'll be mm. on the road on the road next year, um, and we'll be off doing. Uh, we'll do we'll do some. Uh, be <laughs> we'll be doing yeah, some video Blue says stuff. anyone who wants to donate a TV to the project, yes. ask Serb on Discord, yes, please. Because as you can see, my te my televisions are very old. <laughs> so, yeah, Amy, you know, you know, to pop a link to your discord in the chat that'd be great we can uh get people to join it's, it's up there i think winter blues posted it is he mm. is he uh oh, is he? spamming the link good stuff. oh yeah, yeah there we are thank you superb yeah so that's the killer quads discord um killer quads are on youtube as well so we streamed the uh wings over the valley we streamed on the killer quads channel uh, so go and have a look on the Killer Quads YouTube channel for that if you want to watch the, the wing racing uh, and the Jim Gibney Memorial Race, which we, was our BQE uh, five-inch race last year. That's streamed up there as well. Uh, and have a look at FPV Racing Solutions because there's going to be apparently there's going to be a trailer build and then, <laughs> and, and then a lot of racing on there next year. So I'm, I'm going to be all over the place. Um, X-Class, wings, five-inch. Uh, and I'm told I'm going to be doing some whoop racing over the winter as well, but Ooh. we'll see what happens. I do enjoy your live streams as well. Uh, I do like to have them just sitting on in the corner while I'm usually while I'm decorating the flat, to be honest, and doing <laughs> what I'd be mostly doing while following them. But yeah, just sort of getting to hear some regular names and uh, yeah, getting to sort of learn what's going on to be good. Yeah. Well, that, that's. Um... I, I, I've said it before. I don't know if I'd said it last time I was here. I, I, I've got this whole ethos of passing the wife test. <laughs> um, so the, the the streams are great. Everybody that streams does a really good job. But the, the thing that I want to bring to my streams um, on top of that to raise that bar is the wife test. So we've, we've got our nice big telly in the living room. And if I'm very lucky... Um, I'm allowed to stick a couple of YouTubes on and watch them from the comfort mm. of the sofa. And will a live streamed wing X class or, or five inch race event pass the wife test? Can I put it on on the TV in the living room and last longer than five minutes before she says, Will she notice it's not Love <laughs> Island? Can you just smoothly segue <laughs> between the two? <laughs> so, yeah, it, it, it's, um, you know, tell those those personal stories. Get some, yeah. You know, interview some pilots, with, uh, which uh, they did at the championships, which was a great change. Get, get. Um, I, I make the pilots give me a, a headshot, so that I've got a photo of each pilot that I can put in the corner of their feed. So you've not just got a feed of this thing whizzing through the gates. You, you can see who it is. You need yeah. some false drama for the wives, <laughs> you know. <laughs> like, Absolutely. Yeah. Frank what? has <laughs> left the toilet seat up. 
Danny's not very happy about. You <laughs> fucking slag. It's it's all about the jeopardy, right? TV is like all about the jeopardy. What well, can mm. you generate some jeopardy? Um, and when you start telling those stories and talking about the people as as well as the technology, got to have some think... candid camera of people shouting at each other in the paddock before the race. <laughs> well, you you know, the rival is going. Uh, this season, you would have got some candid photos of me kicking a folding chair across a <laughs> across a field because <laughs> a race started before I was ready because I I was too stupid to go. I'm not ready. Um, and I got really irate about it and walked back to the pits and kicked my folding chair and it went flying. And everybody was really shocked and I felt really silly. <laughs> <laughs> but at the time it felt right. I just needed to kick something. <laughs> so, Richard Warwick in the chat is asking about static cameras filming and flying. And Richard Warwick in the chat has clearly never watched any of your streams because <laughs> that has been a repeat feature is where's the field camera going to be pointing now? Yes. Yeah, we got we get the field cameras out there. Um, we we use NDI cameras, um, so you can install NDI on an old iPhone, um, which is really handy. So you can scatter old iPhones around the field um, and do that. And also at um, Wings and Wheels and Wings Over the Valley, uh, I managed to get the NDI camera working wirelessly on one of them. So I did actually go and romp around for a bit with the with the iPhone and go, "Here's the start gate," and this uh, felt like a bit of a wally, but People seem to like that. You know, getting a but bit, do you a bit cut of... between them because you you must have to cut every second to get things in frame. Yeah, it's you can't really do the race from the from the field cameras. You, you want to go to the onboard um, and watch it from onboard. And then if, if there's a good chase going on, um, so say uh, I'm chasing Druid, or it seems to happen at practice, you could go full screen to my feed, and now we've got HD zero. You can actually see the quad in front. Um, so that's good. You can, uh, as as um, kind of race director, producer, director, all at the same time. If you can spot those little battles going on and 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 switch your OBS, uh, your your screens between them, uh, yeah. you can capture some some good stuff. But on the static cameras, what I tend to do is I'll put one behind the takeoff blocks. So when you go, you hear the beeps and everybody starts. You get a nice visual of all the quads leaving the blocks, and then we'll go on board with them. Um, and if you've got a if you've got a feature such as a, a corkscrew or some arrangement of gates that's kind of slowing them down a bit, but they're they're there doing the corkscrew through three gates for for a like half a millisecond, you can put a static camera there and you can switch to that sometimes. But yeah, it's a real challenge with drone racing to to put a field camera out there and really capture it. With the wings, not so bad. With the X class, not so bad because they're gigantic. Um, yeah, yeah, small just, stuff without predictable flight patterns going really fast. It's a yeah. challenge. Yeah. From from our experience of watching it of Popham, going putting the camera under the one gate worked pretty well with the wings. Yeah. Uh, although <laughs> I had to almost take my camera out and us several times, but that was part of the excitement. <laughs> yeah. We put, Again, it's like put the camera by the trickiest gate. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and yeah, I mean, this is something we didn't really touch on. I was thinking about we should touch on with the, the 2022 season sort of wrapping up. How much uh, has digital sort of come into the racing scene now? Because I mean, when we we went to a, a freestyle event, uh, uh, quite a few of us uh, a month or two ago now, and DJI had completely taken over the, the freestyle side of things. Yeah. So, 100%. what about the racing? What's the what's the situation with the racing at the moment? How much is analog? How much is HD zero? Is is DJI making any headway into no. racing at all? No. So when when it comes to racing, there is there is no DJI because they won't work with us, and we can't work with them uh, because the goggles transmit, which causes all sorts of issues. They they range their power dynamically, so trying to do a, so the lap timer works by judging video strength. So when you go through the start finish gate, that's the highest video signal the thing in the gate is going to see. With DJI, it auto ranges. You just can't. It's just you can manage to just about time a couple of DJI's in the air at once, but um, it would be a whole load of the start finish gate the furthest away from the pilots. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's a whole load of. Um, 
it's very difficult to do it's very tetchy because dji doesn't really work for racing and uh, a race director would have to invest into even more equipment and even more stuff to try and stream it um yeah so dj is a no-go for racing but if i'm going freestyling i'm getting my dji goggles which are on the shelf up there yeah because dj is so like for frank was saying is, this, is where it's at. this discontinuity between racing and freestyle continues with the two parties having different needs it's no longer yeah. A yeah. generalist pastime where you can take a freestyle quad and, and go right well you could but not with yeah. dji but it, if you take it, a race quad with your hd zero gear you, you could technically freestyle it but you're going to just yeah. going to have a better experience if you've got yeah. something yeah. that is dgi or walk snail with that retransmission yeah it's the equipment for the job you know it, you know that you you wouldn't enter a formula one race in a in a rally car so for for racing uh, the advent of HD zero has been really amazing for us because it gives us that HD quality, but it's on the usual race band channels. It can be timed by the lap timers. Uh, it can be streamed by the race director. Um, so I, we've actually got, uh, so that's a HD zero event VRX. Um, so that is, uh, just a nondescript gray box. Uh, for those watching uh, without four pictures, <laughs> that gives you that gives you four outputs, four HDMI outputs. I've got two of those, which will give me eight outputs, uh, and that's what I can use to to stream the video. And it will stream analog and HD zero, no mess, no fuss. Mm. But that is um, with the HDMI multiplexer. That's a grand and a half's worth of gear, so that I can stream the so I can stream the races. Uh, so that's a it's a big investment for race directors and the the bdra have actually managed to put together their own set of that kit and if you want to do a five inch race you can give them a call and say can i borrow the event vrx's um because i'm i want to go off and i want to do fpv racing solutions and i want to do the wing races and the whoop races and the x class races and the five inch races i've invested in my own kit and that will be permanently installed in the trailer so i can do that but yeah hd zero is is where it's at there were a few races early in the season where I, i'm pretty sure the split was about 50 percent hd zero and analog i think there might have been a small dip in hd zero i think there's a, a couple of pilots that have found it a bit fragile um oh, okay. because it, it is quite early days don't forget it's quite an early technology they were struggling um, with things like retention clips on the ufl i think the yeah. early but but it's improved now. So the, the VTXs, the latest VTXs are much better. Uh, the new cameras that are coming along are really good. We've got a 4.3 nano camera now. Uh, and of course, the HD Zero goggles are, are coming in the next sort of couple of weeks, we hope. Um, so you won't have to have all sorts of weird gubbins hanging off the front of your, your goggles anymore, um, which I think is really going to help it. It sounds like for racing, they've really improved the glass-to-glass -glass latency with those goggles. It's like an optimized signal path rather than yeah. the HDMI signal path that was not great by the sound of it. Yeah. If if they deliver half of what they've promised, it's going to be amazing. Uh, and it, it's great. Uh, as a, I'm fully HD now. I'm HD zero on all three of my race quads uh, because two is one and one is none, right? That's why I have three. It's an old, it's a SAS thing. Um, and the difference in being able to actually see your opponent um, is huge. Uh, to, to actually be able to get an overtake done um, and see see the, the, the whites of their props <laughs> is, uh, yeah, it's a real benefit. I don't know about the real, real quick guys. It'd be interesting actually to ask someone like Sol, like what they think uh, of the difference, because I... I suspect that they're going so fast that it's mostly instinct anyway. Um, mm -hmm. And if you There's gave a lot them pre-turning, for example, right? Yeah. If you gave them analog and you, and HD zero back to back, would it make them any quicker? Probably not. I, I have a slight suspicion that you could probably blindfold Sol and he could fly that track anyway, because there's a lot of muscle memory. Uh, yeah, real fast racers don't look where they're going as such not not in the same way that we would like there's a gate i must go through it the gate just comes up out peripheral vision as they go just yeah. <laughs> through yeah. very yeah, they're always looking at least one gate ahead lining themselves for the, the line they need to hit the gate after the one they're about to fly through yeah yeah 
yeah so, so they're going through that gate sideways or backwards or however they need to yeah as, as a, an ex like track racer um looking through the corner is like what what you do in a car those guys are looking through the gate to the next gate they're they're not even concentrating they're literally looking at the gate ahead of the gate they're flying through um and lining up for that and finding the quickest lines you, yeah the 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 reaction times on these these top guys are amazing and what about um the actual craft themselves i mean what what's the sort of typical frame size and prop size and batteries and counts um, and all that kind of thing like what's is is there is it settled on anything or is it still very much there's a hmm. there's a five inch 280 and a it's, two it's a, inch it's a five inch yeah i mean i can I, let me try grab a racer hold on yeah. i've heard good things about open racer <laughs> uh, le mans frame <laughs> So I know um, at the weekend, Druid had a tiny trainer with him, which was his backup, which is a three-inch racer. Um, but this is uh, a 533 Switchback Pro frame. Uh, it's got Zing motors on it, uh, Fox ear stack. You can see in the top, um, it's got a wider top plate on because it has that HD0 VTX. You see so is that a 20 mil stack? It is a 20 mil, yeah. Uh, and you can see... It's tight build. Very see tight. this? See this little wire here that came loose? Yeah, a little quite exposed wire by the looks of it. Yes, yeah, that ground wire there, which yeah. Um, yeah. popped the off. The red one looks like it's going to catch the gate next. Yeah, it's it's uh, sticking out a little bit there. So be because that uh, HD0 VTX sticks out that bit further, it just got caught in the midair. Um, mm -hmm. And it survived uh, until halfway through. That was round finals round three. Uh, and I was just about to put an overtake on the guy who was in first, and the, the wire popped off. And that's it. Ooh. Game over. Are you still uh, down at 25 milliwatt? Yeah. All the racing 25? Okay. Yeah. So everybody races at 25 milliwatts. Um, little, little lollipops at the back do absolutely fine. Video is perfect on a racetrack. Mm -hmm. you, you can get to the, you know, three quarters of the way across the football field before yeah. you notice anything. I remember seeing that stadium you were in, but apparently that was like a nightmare scenario. Oh, There's a lot yeah. of snow on the video there. It was, it was a, a big Faraday cage. Um, mm. So we were inside a massive uh, football um, stadium. For some reason, I couldn't remember the word stadium. Um, yeah, massive stadium Hello, seating. And, and uh, yeah, it was it was www.multipathing.com. It was, it was awful. Uh, but the HD Zero managed it really quite nicely, actually. To be honest, we we put an analog quad out uh, to test, and it was ten times worse. Wow! I um, saw a bit of snow on the HD Zero feeds, which I thought was that's yeah. Tricky. It it was a shame because we were really there to kind of show what HD Zero could do, mm. and and we did it in a really really difficult environment. So of course, any any naysayer will look at it and go, "Oh, look how terrible and snowy that was." He's like, "Yeah, but look at the environment." Um, if you look at the analog signal and be yeah. like, oh, well, the analog guys couldn't fly in it. Huh? Oh, yeah. really? <laughs> if, if you look at, you know, some of the streams from the races that we've had this year, um, so the, the Jim Gibney race, uh, Laxton, uh, SGDC, Hull, um, Delta Hawks, you know, the, there's plenty of HD Zero guys at those. And you're, you're, if you go back and look at them, you'll see a much more representative HD Zero experience. Um, and the champs as well, the champs that we just had. So, yeah, I think HD Zero is it's definitely not going away. Let's put it that way. What about on the control link side of side of things? Well, it's the ELRS hype train, isn't it? <laughs> so, There's a lot so of hype. That, that, I am on the, that hype train. That is the next big thing. <laughs> yeah. um, so, uh, Crossfire is, is still out there. Um, TBS, um, I forget what their control link is called now. The new, the newer one. Uh, Tracer. Smoke, Tracer. Tracer, that's it. Yeah. Smokey, you'll shout at me for forgetting that. How has that still got some popularity with racers? In freestyle, yeah. Tracer kind of appeared, and everyone went, kind of did a. Yeah, this, and then this, went and bought something else, whether it's Ghost or Real or S. Bit of TBS out there. There's a, a, a fair lump of, of Ghost out there. Um, I was on uh, Ghost before I went to HD Zero, 
so I had a, a ghost duo, um, which was really excellent. Just one board and two antennas, and you're off to the races. Um, but yeah, ELRS is it's so nice to just. Um, I actually put these the race gods onto the LRS version three before the champs, which was possibly a bit brave. But to ju to just power it up, wait for it to join your home Wi-Fi, and then click build and flash. Someone and was done. talking about race integration for that, so it's slightly a leading question from my side. But there were people talking about wouldn't it be nice because you know how they link to the goggles and the radio and they use like a Wi-Fi network to tie it all together. Yeah, they're thinking, well, wouldn't it be nice if you could like set your pilot handle on the system and yeah. then it would talk to the race organizer and the race organizer could even arbitrate and be like well yeah bell rick's on channel one and cerberus is on r3 and just hand out your channels to you yeah yeah so with the the backpack functionality yeah you could possibly do stuff like the the lap timer could have a backpack built in or something like that there could be a backpack built into something at race control and the and you could literally allocate their channels it needs beings immensely more devious than myself to sit there and do some coding and figure that sort of stuff out uh, and also you've got problems with um so so people like live time so we're tied to live time because it does what we need it to do uh so that means you would live time so live time is the the timing software that we use to run the race right. Uh, and it's, and it's can... used way outside of even RC, right? It's, it's used yeah. for like all sorts of types of racing, usually with the infrared beacons. That's the, like I've even seen like people with go karting use live time with infrared beacons, yeah. the same ones that were on quads like yeah. five years they're, ago. They're using it for for um, RC car racing, for full size car racing, for drag racing. All, all sorts well, of stuff, and, and we so use. You've it got to... some interface between like the lap RF stuff and live yeah. time. Yeah. So you you put your lap RF eight out. It connects to live time. Job done. Everything works. Uh, there's there's also the, the the rotor hazard stuff. So the rotor hazard timers. Um, oh yeah. So that's a rotor hazard timer. Um, which I don't. Like a piece it's it's a box. box that says killer quads on it. Yeah. <laughs> killer quads Ooh, right? inside the box. Awesome. There's a lot of Arduinos. On... Many Arduinos and receivers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So there's eight RX5808 receivers, um, and they sit there and look for the, uh, for, the, for the RSSI. So it draws a graph of RSSI over time. They're sitting there pointing upwards in the start-finish gate. So quad comes across. It sees a, a peak in the, the video signal. You know it's crossed the line. Rotor hazard is is really amazing open source project um i've got two of these they're great things you're quite heavily involved i think you were mentioning rotor hazard when we spoke to you last how's that been going um so i've not been using rotor hazard for the last 12 months uh because i was doing quite so much bqe stuff um it was live time and and the lap rfa okay. uh, and rotor hazard wasn't really able to do the types of races that we run so it it didn't understand the race format, uh, but there's actually just been a release or uh, an update to Rotor Hazard, uh, and I'm told it has the 30 second grace period now, and um, they've developed some of that stuff that we needed to use. So, hopefully, I'm going to update these two and see what they do. But the the lap RFA is is bomb proof. You know, it does what you need. Mm. And you've Doesn't... got one now. I have yes, because <laughs> I couldn't buy one. For love or money, I could not purchase um, a lap RFA. Where is the damn thing? Hold on. I, I have one kicking around here that needed using. So there we go. So how are you programming? Which, which, does the, the lap RF know the pilot's names, or does it just tell you channels and lap times, and then you have to put the pilot's names into live time? Yeah, yeah. So live time has a whole database of the, the pilots, um, and the lap RF is basically telling you um so yeah it's got built out into the the protective box uh, so anybody that's that like an xlr plug on the side uh so that is a uh new trick uh new rj45 like a speaker connector connector yeah but it's rj45 so i can seal the box up so uh for those not getting the pictures it's just a, a plastic box 
with the, the lap time sitting in it, and I've got that connection, so I can just very neat run it with power over Ethernet, set it out in the field, uh, and then when someone hits it, they destroy the box. The box is uh, disposable. And they're a five or eight. Excellent. That's um, a nice looking solution you've got there. Gives you a bit of protection. So, uh, who out of here will be taking part in some of these future races? Frank, you were supposed to have your wing set up for earlier races <laughs> this year, weren't yeah. you? Yeah, yeah. Then you destroyed them all. Mm. One of them flies absolutely wonderfully. Uh, it's it's great, and uh, I need to think about Feckenham. Uh, at the moment, though... I mean, I I was a bit worried I might not make the show tonight because I thought I was going to miss the only bus that runs between work and home today because I currently don't have a road legal car. Um, so we'll, I need to resolve that before I go to any events. Um, but yes, I would like to take take my wing now that I know that it flies really nice and I like it and it's fun. Did it fail, Frank? <laughs> we'll we'll not talk about this on air. Um... Oh, Frank, no! <laughs> the editor can only send with so much swearing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I'll, he'll to, he'll be I'll hearing this story this. at the weekend anyway. Um, but yes, so. Uh, but yes, I, I want to. I want to take the wing out and, and race it. The the races, the the atmosphere at the wing races seems very fun, and I want to get involved. Um, Good. So, and I've already looked at like there's two or three other wings that I want to buy and build uh, <laughs> that are on the list. So as soon as I have a workbench in this flat, and I'm not working on the flat, but in the flat. There we go. And we'll be setting something up. Curry is, I is ready this, to this week just for doing this, but probably not for this year. It's going to be next season. And mainly, it's got a massive bloody jack sticker on it, which is the main feature. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is my idea for. I, I sort of giddy. promised I would have a go next year because uh, me and Frank went to one of the pop a minute. It did look good fun. Yeah. And uh, we enjoyed life. watching the crashing. And I thought, I want to crash as well. This looks good. So yeah, we'll, we'll get there at some point. It's good, and it's not as expensive as the X-Class crashing. That's no, true. exactly. What about Stephen? Stephen's building a wing. Is, is he going to race a wing? <laughs> I think you've got to. No, I'm going to build something really slow so I can figure out this whole wing malarkey. It's going to be it's going to be a little putt putt cruiser. It's not going to be anything fancy. Oh, come on, uh, I've, I've, I think I've lined up a pair of 2204s, 1500 kV, and they're just going to putter along and not take much battery, so I can keep it light. I mean, I think that wasn't at the Popham event. I'm fairly certain there was a ZOHD drift that was putting in laps. So, you know. yeah. No, someone had that mini. Um, what was it? The it was one of the ones that's really fast. Orange nose. Forgot what it is now. Goblin. Really, oh, fucking hell. The goblin. He had a, a, a tiny uh, nano goblin. Mm. Running on, I think, 2S on, on a full iNav setup. And it was literally just going. <laughs> he still managed to crash it, of course, and hit the yeah. gate and stuff. He just but put it, the circuit into Mission Planner. And it was more about there. just, you know, going around and, and giving it a go, which I thought was great fun. It's, it's, it, it gave the very early sense of, like, if we can just make it round, we're doing well. What are we looking at there? It's got a whole load of carbon. That's black mm -hmm. hot milk glue. <laughs> oh, that's glue. Ooh. So th th this is how you survive the wing season next year. That's is, this is my plan. <laughs> so I have a whole whole boatload of that's black a whole hot spare milk wing glue right there. Yep, just, just made of glue. I my wings it's... fly off if I crash. That's the whole, that's the point of my one. <laughs> and then works? you just put them back in. I think we need a, an LDO. I'll make turtle mode quite difficult. We need an LDO head-to-head -head next year, definitely. See which LDO pilot's going to score the most points wing racing next year. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of that's a lot of logistics for us to turn up <laughs> with actually the same one. <laughs> Failsafe is shouting at us. He wants quadratic, and he wants it now. He wants, he wants it, it now. brought back. <laughs> well, um, yes, I want it back as well. Now that I'm settled in my little office, what I have done built so that I can work from home, yeah, uh, I would like to bring it back. So 
we'll do it at some point. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, when you're not busy doing everything else, you yeah, know, when, slot yeah. it in between changing the brakes and making the furniture. Yeah, fine. Fitting out a trailer and yeah, all sorts of madness. So um, before we wrap up the the show tonight, is there anything else we haven't covered? Because I know you've got a lot of stuff. We, we've talked about 2022 season. 23 season you've talked about projects race trailer killer quads fpv racing solutions bdra uh the championships uh wing racing x class is there anything else is there anything else we should I, mention I, I think i've said far too much already <laughs> <laughs> no it's all it's all good we, stuff is there anything do, else you want to know we do have ldo wing stickers that were were long. I can get some more made. Do we? I haven't got any in my wing. Hmm. What? Oh, let's do it. Get me some scent to put on the race trailer. Get some proper mm. sponsorship out there. Yeah, can do. I can. I can wi get some more whizzed off. I pay you and Haribo to place our stickers on your wings. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's uh, gummy bears, right? That's that's in the that's in the pack the racing pack pilot pack uh, oh, yeah so so whenever i whenever we do an event there's a there's a pilot pack so it's a document that goes out to the pilots beforehand it's like some do's and don'ts and what to expect and stuff and nobody ever reads these things so every time i do a pilot pack there are easter eggs hidden in the pilot pack so there'll be something like uh you are required to bring jelly babies for the race director's wife um or uh I think at Wings Over the Valley, I tried to get some fries Turkish Delight for myself, and nobody bought me any, which was <laughs> quite disappointing. Turkish Delight. <laughs> um, so I've yeah, always it's... been dismayed that fries didn't make a pistachio one along with the rose one. I think that would have really rounded things out. <laughs> so, yeah, if you, if you ever get a, uh, an FPV Racing Solutions pilot pack, look out for the gotchas. They're, they're hidden in there. Excellent. Little, little, little so if people right? want to find out more, where can they go? Um, the internet. I don't know. <laughs> Search for <laughs> Google it. So yeah, so uh, FPV Racing Solutions does have a page on Facebook, um, which is quite new and has like at least six followers already. Um, so yeah, we'll be trying to grow that. Um, so yeah, go go and have a look for that on the Faceballs. Uh, FPV Racing Solutions and Killer Quads uh, are on the YouTube. So a quick search for those channels will bring them up. Uh, Killer Quads. Um, the community group is on Facebook as well. Uh, and of course, don't forget BDRA, IFPV. Uh, if you do want to get into racing next season, uh, do some X class, do some wing, do some five inch. IFPV uh, is the website to go and look at. That's where, as I say, that's like Ticketmaster for the FPV community. Uh, that's where you'll find all your races next year. Um, and I don't think there's any on there right now. Feckenham is on there, but I think. Uh, it might be sold out by now, Frank. Not sure. No, I don't, you'll have to uh, see if you can get a, a last-minute place. Um, wow. I think that's about it, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank no. you very much for coming on the show. I wish you every success with FPV Racing Solutions. It looks excellent. Thank you very much. And now thank all that's for left for us me. to do is to thank you, Cerberus, and thank our awesome patrons who are currently scrolling by at the bottom of the screen. Thank you very much, Patreons. You make this all possible. You keep us online, and you're awesome. Thank you. An impartial. So you can't... <laughs> no companies are bribing us with jelly beans or Turkish delight. <laughs> How that they said, if a patron wanted to pay top whack, we would do whatever they said. If, yeah, yeah um, we still have the 200 quid Patreon tier of like, we'll do a show about whatever you want. Do, do I get yeah. Turkish so Delight just, if just I sign up for that? Put it get out there. You, yeah. Well, yeah. You certainly get <laughs> I feel like I should explain that if you weren't alive in the Turkish 70s, delight. Turkish Delight is this disgusting sweet thing they used to have. <laughs> it's a mixture yeah. of corn yeah. starch and sugar, out which is an exotic food if you're from 1970. Yeah. Yeah. It's I do the only. Sultans. Yeah, the only thing that could outdo that was the ketchup and what was it? Ketchup and mayonnaise, a bit of paprika, the and with the prawn 
the oh, what was it called? What what are you talking about, Jack? You're just the, you're the, saying food the, stuff. The, prawn the cocktail. Starter, I think you're skirting around a prawn cocktail. cocktail. Yes. Yeah, that's it. With a oh. Mary Rose sauce, which you're is alive. revolting. It's uh. <laughs> the quality is there. Anyway, uh, thank you. You've been joined by everyone's favourite curry kitten. Good night. Uh, everyone's uh, beloved uh, moustache wax, Stephen. Cheers. Good night. And even hairier than usual, Frank. Bye. And uh, please send your <coughs> jelly babies to Cerebrus. Cerebrus. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been bright as I fly. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Oh.